Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the video series on UFT automation. In this video, we will look at uh, uh, the debugging concepts in UFT. Uh, the debugging concepts comes real handy when you have issues with your uh, scripts and uh, this is the only way to troubleshoot the scripts. And you know, this is, uh, these concepts are pretty much same in .NET programming environment. In Java programming environment, any other programming environment, it's in these debugging concepts are pretty much the same. So, let's start with a breakpoint. Uh, you know, here I have a very simple script. It uh, you know there are two values here, price and number of tickets, and uh, two numbers, and I'm multiplying it using a function library though so this test is um, has a you know function library associated to it let's go in there so this particular function library the, which you know I believe you all have looked at it um, in another video it's a it's the same uh, function library so it has multiple methods you know for methods to add subtract divide multiply and there is another thing here well we don't have to worry about it it, it just takes a, a, a foreign hat and converts into a Celsius so so we're going to use one of these functions to multiply numbers so let's go there go back to the script and uh, you know we will uh, it's actually printing something out so it will be in the output let me go ahead and run the script and just to show that you know it works just fine and then we'll we'll talk about you know debugging concepts so well, it's working. Now, we don't. Let's say, you know, if it's a huge script and a huge function library, it might be hard to tell where these values are coming from. So, and also, uh, let's say I really want to know what is being passed here. I mean, I know that this is hundred point two, and uh, this is twenty. I really want to know what the value of price that's going in. So to start with that, that is exactly what I'm trying to determine. And uh, so multiply that's here. So that's much, whatever I pass there should be coming here. So I want to know this as well. That would be our target. So in order for us to look at those values, first thing we need to do is we need to add a breakpoint. Breakpoint, uh, okay, for now let's see how we can add a breakpoint and then we'll talk about what a breakpoint is. So here, I believe you might have seen uh, the other video where we were talking about debugging, not debugging, I'm sorry, adding bookmarks. It's the same way, you, you just click on this vertical bar and that red dot is the breakpoint. And if you go, there's a breakpoint pane and as you add breakpoints, it adds things here. I can delete them. I can add them and make them inactive. So, so this is the only active breakpoint, but these two are not active. Even though they are marked and they are here, but they are not active. They are not enabled primarily. So let me remove that. So let me say this is the very first line within the script. I'm going to add a breakpoint there, meaning the execution will stop right there, line number seven. Let me do that. Okay. So the, the execution stopped. I mean, this is applicable even for you know flight reservation application, or for that matter, any script. You add a breakpoint, the script stops execution right there. I mean, it's before the line gets executed. That's when it stopped, not after. So when you say breakpoint is at seven, bef right before line number seven needs to be executed, that's when you you are putting a breakpoint. You're stopping there. So the first option, you, when you have this, you can just say, you know, continue, and it will just, you know, continue with the next step and finish the whole thing. But say there's another breakpoint here. So if you run it, so for number, now first it will stop at number seven. And at number seven, if I say continue, then it will stop at 10, 11 again because there's another breakpoint. 
So that's um, you know one idea of using uh, breakpoints. Let's say I have these two, but I want to do something a little bit different. I want to, you know, add a breakpoint. I mean, I, I, there's a breakpoint, and I want to go step by step rather than, you know, it stops and then I continue. I don't want to do that. I really want to put a breakpoint and go step by step and see what happens. And I want to do line by line, check things up. So let me run the script. So it should stop at line number seven. So let me clear all this. So line number seven. Now, instead of using the continue, you have two other things here. One is step into, the other is step over. And if you look at the icon, if you pay attention to it, step into, it, it's almost going into something. Whereas step over is just, you know, stepping over. So if I uh, do, uh, you know, I'll skip this for a second here and I'll start using step over. So when I click this, hit this button, what happens is now it finished line number seven, it went to line eight. Hit that time line, I mean that button, step over, it goes to next line. Then it goes to the next line. So it just, you know, when it finished line nine, that means that's where this is coming from. This print came after executing line number nine that means there must be something inside there line nine inside you remember that word inside something inside this thing printed this line out now i do you know step over again so that was the very last line and it finished and you have all this now let's debug the you know go through the same thing again but this time we will use step into now step into may you know it has a value only if there is some sort of a function or a link into this whole deal. Say for example here if I do step into I mean there's nothing to go and investigate there. So I'm doing step into again, nothing. But look at line number nine. It says that total equal to multiply and it's passing two arguments. Then what is this multiply? And multiply is one of those functions. So if I do step over, then it'll go to line. It'll finish everything. It'll, it will execute the function, get the value, assign it a total, and then go to line number 11. Say instead I want to do step into. That means it needs to go into the function multiply. If I hit that, it goes into 19. I mean, it, it, it's here now. If you look at A, and B, those are the two values. Let's say I want to know A and B, but how do I know? I can't see any values here, right? Uh, look at here. A is 20, B is uh, 102. Sorry, I mean to say 100.2. That's a double, that's an integer. So let me keep this here, local variables. So local variables will display all the values that are local to that particular activity. So let me continue with that. So I can do step out, meaning it'll, it, you know, it'll finish the whole thing. I mean, 19, 18, it'll finish the whole thing and exit out of that whole function and continue to the next line. But if I do step into, but there is no step into here. If, if this were to call another function, it will go, you know, into that other function as well. But here, let's, you know, continue step over and it's going to multiply. Do that. And then it's here. Now if I go to local variables, I have price as 100.2, number of figures 20, total as 2004. And, you know, the thing is there might be, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 variables, you know, within this particular action. Now, look at this. We don't have A and B here because A and B are irrelevant for this section of the script. So you only have certain variables and those variables are here. But what if you have like 30, 40 variables and you only want to kind of watch, you know, two specific variables, right? So there's a way to do that. So let me show that as well. I'll just hit continue. That should finish the script. So this time we will kind of twist this a little bit. I'm going to run it. It's going to, of course, you know, break there. What I'll do is I want to watch scripts. I can do this, put an expression there, I you know the actual um, you know variable, or you can do price, say right click on it and say add to watch. So I, I always want to watch the price, and then I also want to watch um, the
the total and also want to watch uh, the number of scripts and the total as well and uh, I also want to watch A B as well Let me adjust the screen a little bit I mean this would help because you know irrespective of where you are you will see you know because these three are coming from this document but the variables a and b are actually coming from the function so if when i have this look at this i'm going to do go slow uh, i'll step into uh, as much as i can so step over look at the price look at you know look at the watch uh, pane here it's 100.2 let's step over so look at number of tickets is 20 because now the value has been assigned i'm going to step into and now the, by the time it went into step into these variables are not uh, you know accessible variable is undefined because it's undefined within the scope then uh, I'm going to do a step over I'm going to watch so the, we know these two values step over step over and now again we are back so we don't have to you know uh, switch back here and there so we can add values here within the watch so it, it really doesn't kind of you know show its main purpose when you have just handful of variables but when you when you're dealing with you know tens of variables you know 50 60 100 sometimes even 200 variables then this comes real handy because you can pick and choose the variables that you want to watch as the script is executing i mean to say not even i mean our right term is you know uh, while we're debugging it really helps so do that so it's done now if we go to you know it's 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 a debugging session so you don't have those you know watch it's a runtime pain so it's done so that is how you debug uh, and if you go to let me start one more time just a quick recap so the breakpoint will actually you know stop the script from executing so that's right before the step gets executed you know the step uh, the execution will stop that's one option or you know one thing and the uh, way you add breakpoint is just clicking here and you, know, you can do while you're running as long as it is you know it's stopped you can just you know click there and it'll just stop executing and not just here you can actually add a breakpoint inside the function and if you try to continue to run it'll stop there because you, you have breakpoint there and if you put a breakpoint now here and if you try to run it'll come and stop here so that's why you know few you know I mean the thing about breakpoint and here if I so this is step into and this is step over and this is not visible you know it's disabled you just step out so if you're inside some function you can exit that you, know, you can you can complete the execution of that function and exit out and come back to where you know it is being you called from so it comes real handy when you have issues with the scripts you really don't know what's happening then you can really stop the script execute line by line take your time investigate it and see what happening and this comes real handy when you're working with uh, integrating with other systems say your application is you know integrating i'm sorry integrated with a database and talking to a third party application and the scenario includes the whole thing then you can literally go step by step check in the database check with the third party application come back check here do a few things go back check so you can do all that it comes real handy so and a lot of programmers for sorry a lot of QA testers for for some reason they kind of get scared getting into debugging and you know experimenting and doing that so i would highly encourage if this is making you uncomfortable at least spend a couple of hours start with a simple script debug every script run record a script debug it record a script debug it unless you are comfortable until you get comfortable because this is one of those things you know in real time you will be debugging the scripts all the time so when you in an interview you know if you get a chance to talk about debugging and you talk i mean you literally can impress them it has a lot of value but make sure you talk about how you debug how you take advantage of step into step out and step over and how you take advantage of watch and local variables because that's important i mean if you don't know how to add a variable to watch there is no point in debugging 
because that's where the power of debugging you know uh, comes into play okay well and you know practice that that's what you know helps you okay well that, then that's it about uh, you know debugging in UFT and uh, I will talk to you in the next video